Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here is my Sony Nex 6 and the new A7 finally came in. Uh, the A7 has the kit lens on there. So, and this is the 18 to 55 kit lens on the Sony Nex 6. So I wanted to show you basically the difference in size, you know, with the kit lens, perfect comparison. They both have electronic viewfinders, and both lenses have optical steady shot and they're both really good cameras. The difference is this is full frame, this is APS-C basically, and the build quality is significantly better on the A7. The, the, it's all metal, it's much more like the RX-1 build quality. This is all plastic, it's like that rugged plastic style. The bottom of the A7 compared to the Nex 6, it's a little bit different the way it's designed. Notice how much better the tripod mount area is on the A7. You could tell, I mean, just the thickness, it's metal, um, it is on the seam there, which, you know, could arguably uh, be a little better, but still much better than the Nex 6 design, and I'd have more confidence putting a heavier lens on the A7 than the Nex 6 by far. Um, otherwise, the, the grip is, is similar from the bottom. You can see on the A7 it's much bigger. Um, if you look at the battery door, um, it's, a little di it's a much different design, but it's really not much bigger. It's just it's, it's a little wider, and it's a little bit um, thicker overall. The grip. Now I want to show you uh, the sensor size difference so let me just change my camera angle here and I'll show you what the sensors look like. Alright so check out the difference in sensor size. Notice the full frame gigantic versus the APS-C size over here. It's very drastic and that's why the full frame you know is favored by photographers. It gives you a lot more flexibility with depth of field usually significantly better image quality. Uh, not so much in this case. I mean the next the APS-C size sensors are so good these days that you know image quality is really great on both. It is better on the A7 but it's not like night and day better. It's just the format itself has a lot of advantages as far as control and things like that. Also because the sensor is so much bigger um, you know you can fit a lot more a lot larger pixel size on the on the sensor itself you know per area one other note I wanted to point out was um, they are both e-mount cameras and this is a full frame e-mount versus the crop factor e-mount so this lens will mount on this camera and this lens will mount on this camera and they will work um, the difference is this is a full frame camera so it'll work on this camera body no problem when if, if you put this lens on this camera you will have crop factor issues because this lens is physically smaller um, and it won't cover the entire sensor area the full frame sensor this being a bigger larger lens it'll easily cover the sensor area on the next six now looking at these cameras from the top first off they both have the standard hot shoe here you can see in addition to that the next six has the pop-up flash which the a7 does not have so if you if you're one of those people that really wants the pop-up flash, you know, the next, the A7 might not be for you just because there's none built in. So no built-in flash at all. That is a nice advantage on the next 6, I must admit. But um, besides that, the A7 pretty much dominates everywhere else. I mean, it's got um, all these different dials. you got the exposure comp dial. This here controls the shutter speed um, and or aperture, depending on how you have it set up, um, the one on the back. You don't really have that many options here on the next 6. You just have this one dial here. There's nothing else. You, you do have the function button um, and the shutter button. Notice the difference where the shutter button is. On the next 6, it's here, and on the A7, it's all the way up here where the RX-1 was, basically an RX-1 chassis, so it makes sense. All right, so checking them out from the back, we can see we have a lot of similarities, um, but also a lot of differences. The viewfinder's in the, more in the center here. The EVF on the next 6 is all the way on the left side. And, you know, the buttons we have, um, the, actually this is sort of similar. We have this wheel here, this wheel here, um, and on this, on the A7, we have the exposure comp wheel, another adjustment wheel, and then an adjustment wheel here. Um, so it is a little different, you know, but uh, similarities are there. The screen articulation is identical. They both swivel the same way. You can grab them from the bottom and pull them out, which is quite nice, um, like so. The um, A7, though, the memory card goes in here as opposed to on the bottom. 
On the next six, the memory card goes on the bottom next to the battery. Oh, another thing I wanted to show you real fast. Let me just go to the menu and show you what the menu looks like. Let me show you the next six menu. I'll hit the menu button. So that's what you get when you go to the next six pictures. And the, a, the A7, you get pro menu style, uh, lots of you know options. So that's a big difference. Um, this camera is much more catered towards the beginner slash amateur. And this one is clearly designed for the professional with menus like this or the semi-professional serious enthusiast, etc. All right, so here's the option I wanted to show you. It's called pre-AF. And what that does is whenever you have the camera, you're holding it. If you just move it around, it's constantly focusing pretty much. If you move the camera from one object to another, it will automatically refocus for you. If you turn this feature off, it won't do that. It'll only focus when you hit the shutter half, halfway down, which is pretty cool. I'll show you. So if I just move the camera, it's not going to focus now. See that? It's not focusing. Otherwise, it would try to focus on the table right there. Just so you know, I'm shooting JPEG and RAW right now because I need to update my Lightroom. My Lightroom is uh, 3.2 and it doesn't support the A7 yet. So that's why I'm shooting both RAW and JPEG. And I'm shooting 24p AVCHD for video, in case you're wondering. Grid line, I have rule of thirds set to on. I'm going to go over this in more detail later. I'm just giving you a rough overview of how I have it set right now. This is auto, so if I put the next six lens on here, it'll automatically adjust the sensor to crop factor mode. That's what this means. So you can use crop factor lenses on this camera, and it'll just automatically adjust. Pretty cool. You might not want that set to auto, though, if you're going to use a lens and you want to try you know, to see what it looks like full frame. And your custom key settings and stuff are in here. Your buttons, you can always change. You can modify them around, all that stuff. This camera really has an unbelievable amount of options. So like I said, I'm going to go in more detail over this stuff later. So I just wanted to show you a couple of the settings I had set, um, if you, just in case you just got your camera and you're wondering, you know, how should I use this, that, and the other. Like I said, I still am figuring this camera out, and I have to go through the menus in more detail. But um, so far, so good. I'm really liking it. And um, it feels really good in my hand also. The grip, I was a little um, leery about at first, but after playing with it for a while, I've, it's gotten really comfortable in my hand, I have to be honest, and I'm starting to like it. My hands have adjusted to the new shutter position compared to my next six, and it feels a lot better. So that's pretty much it for now, and I'll catch up with you guys on Sony Alpha Lab, and please feel free to ask questions if you have them.